Hello and welcome back. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today we're going to be talking about one of the Bobbi Brown holiday items. This is the Lux Encore eyeshadow palette in bronze and I haven't really worn a lot of Bobbi Brown items in the last several years. I've kind of started going back into trying things out with some of the lip glosses, the crushed oil lip glosses, which are great. So I've heard very, very good things about the Luxe Encore eyeshadows, so I wanted to try them out. This is the palette. The palette retails for $55, and there are two color stories. So this is the shade bronze. There's also a burgundy one, which really looks more like rose golds and so forth. Now, although this is called bronze, really the shades are gold. <laughs> They're pretty much all golds. So we're gonna look at some swatches in a second, but first let's go over some product information. Each of these shadows is two and a half grams or 0 0.08 ounces. And I believe the original Lux en Encore eyeshadows, they are sold individually. They're not the same colors as these, but they are part of the regular line. I believe those are also two and a half grams. To be honest, I don't have any of those. And looking online, I have seen two different sizes listed. So I'm not sure if they changed them at one point, but I believe they're the same size as each one of these. Now, each individual Lux eyeshadow is $38. So to get four of them for $55 instead is a huge bargain. And I think it's a really great way to test out this formula. And to say the formula is really unique. These shadows are made in Italy. And one of the things that makes these unique is they're a gelée. So they're like a cream powder type formula. And it's really interesting. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Let me show you what comes with this. This is the packaging for it. And this is, you know, showing the Bobbi Brown holiday package and so forth. And inside you get a little, like a little pamphlet sort of. So it gives you some recommendations of which shades to apply where to give you a specific look. So we have the shimmer luxe look and the sultry eye look. And then on the back, it just goes through the four shades. For these shadows, I don't see a suggested shelf life anywhere on either the box or the actual palette itself, but it does mention to be careful that these are fragile, so to use them carefully. One of the things I like about this palette is the back, you actually have the colors listed, but on the inside, you also have the color names. And when I'm doing like a YouTube video, I just find it really helpful to be able to refer to things by names instead of just pointing or using a number. The mirror does have a little, you know, sticky piece. Oh, this one's tough to pull out. So, and one of the things I like about this one is you don't have to really stick your nails in to try and get it off. It does have a little tab, which I think makes it a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and take a look at the swatches of these. Here are the four shades and I swatched here. This one is chestnut. Right next to that, we have copper. And then right here, we have champagne and then chocolate. So these are the four shades on my fingers. And as I mentioned, these are really more gold tone. I don't consider any of these really bronze. Bronze really typically has to have a little bit more red in it than these do. So there's a hint of it. Uh, for example, this first shade here, Chestnut, that's probably the bronziest shade that there is. And then if you look at copper, it doesn't look like copper at all to me. It really just looks like a bright gold. And then the champagne shade, again, is more of a pale gold. And then we have this really pretty chocolate brown, which is a nice medium neutral brown. Now I'm just holding this up so you can see this closely. You actually do have gold sparkle in every single one of these shades. So there is gonna be a little bit of shimmer in all of these shadows. I have worn these shadows four times already, and I just wanted to show you how they have worn in the pan. So you can see I've definitely used champagne a lot but I've already got like a bit of a divot in there. And that's because of this formula. This formula is like a cream powder formula. It's really very interesting. As I mentioned before, these shadows have a very unique texture. They're called a gelée shadow and they're kind of a mix between a cream and a powder. The closest 
thing that I can think of with a similar texture are actually the Westman Atelier iPods. So if you're familiar with those, it kind of has a bit of the same texture. However, the Westman Atelier iPods, they're a little bit softer and slightly more emollient than these are. So I have to say, you know, putting these on, it's really, it's a little different. You want to put them on a little bit more firmly than you would with a powder because it does have a little extra drag from those creamy properties, but it really, it goes on well. I haven't had any issues with opacity of these shadows. These shadows can be applied with your finger and it's really easy to share them out and get a light wash of color with your finger. However, I prefer to use a brush and I've actually used a wide variety of eyeshadow brushes with these, but going forward, I am going to try to remember to use undyed goat hair brushes with these or synthetic, just because it does have that creamy nature and I feel like it would be a little bit better for the brushes. But these shadows, I mean, I have three looks to show you. I have worn these a total of four times now. They really go on nicely. I think they look great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the three eye looks and the wear test that I have, and then we'll come back and talk about my thoughts. We're testing out the new Bobbi Brown palette. This is from Holiday 2020, and this is the bronze color story. Taking the refer 15, I'm gonna go into the champagne shade. So I'm putting this in the crease, but I'm going to buff it all the way underneath the brow. I'm going to take the same brush and dip in the chocolate. Just getting a little bit on the brush here, and I'm going to put this in the crease on top of the champagne. Moving in with the Sonia G Builder 3 into Chestnut. Using the same brush and going into chocolate. Back in with the wrapper 15 and just buffing this. I have to say the texture of these shadows is really interesting because a little hard to explain but there's no fallout or anything with these and they feel thicker like you have to not harder pan like you're not getting pigment on your brush but more like there is a thicker consistency to the actual product so you have to press a little bit more firmly to get the product up and these shadows seem to go on better with a patting or sweeping motion with a firmer brush versus a lighter brush. The lighter brush like this is, you know, is really giving it more of like a topper appearance, but they go on beautifully with this um, Builder 3. So I think it's really more about the motion. We're gonna go back in with the Builder 3 and I'm gonna go into this copper shade and we're gonna just place that in the center of the eyelid. I'm just taking my finger and just patting over the edges. I'm taking the Refer 03 and I'm gonna go into Chestnut for the lower lash line. For the inner portion, I'm using the same brush. I'm going into Champagne. So I'm gonna start in the inner corner and drag it underneath to about the halfway point. I'm gonna take a little bit of the champagne and put it right under the brow as well. 
For the upper lash line, I'm going to line it with the chocolate shade, but I'm going to dampen my brush with the Inglot Duraline first. So I just added one drop here to my hand and I'm going to dip my brush and then dip it in here. I'm going to stay pretty close to the lash line, but this is a thicker brush, so it's going to be a thicker line. And I twirl the brush to make sure I'm getting all of the color. And then I always like to just do a little bit of the lower part too to just kind of connect them. This is my final eye look. I'm gonna add some mascara and then I will show you a distance shot. This is the final eye look from a distance. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with these shadows so far. So we'll test them out today and see how it goes before we do another look tomorrow. Starting off with the Sonia G Jumbo Blender and going into the shade Chestnut. And I'm putting the powder on the tip. So I started off going in with the more narrow part. And then after I had the color placed in the crease, I turned it and kind of buffed it out a little. And I'm taking the side of the Jumbo Blender and I'm going into the shade Chocolate. And you can see, look at how that looks on my brush, how it has more of that creamy formula. So, I mean, even on the brush, you can tell that this formula is something more unique than a regular eyeshadow. Now I'm going in with my finger in the champagne shape. And although it's called champagne, I mean, look how gold that is. It really has a lot of gold reflection there. I add just a little bit more here. I'm just adding it into the center of the eyelid. Taking this brush and I'm just tapping over the edges. I'm taking the Refer 23 brush. I'm going into the champagne and this is gonna be for the inner corner and the brow arch. And for the lower lash line, I'm using the same brush in the shade Chestnut. And I'm just taking the Jumbo Blender again and just kind of running over the edges of the crease and the highlight, making sure it's all kind of buffed. And look, you can see that really gives a, a nice glisten. You could probably use that shade as a highlight if you want something that gold. I am going to finish my makeup and for the eyes, I'm gonna add just a dark chocolate brown eye pencil and some mascara and I will see you back when I'm done. And this is the final eye look from a distance. It has been six hours since I applied the eyeshadows. Just wanted to show you that I am starting to get a little bit of creasing. And honestly, this formula is like got that cream hybrid texture so you can really just kind of tap out any of the creases but it doesn't this is the first time I've noticed creasing throughout the day so around somewhere between five and a half and six hours is when it really kind of started developing it has now been 10 hours since I applied the eyeshadow and you can see that there's a little bit more creasing since the six hour point but honestly I thought there would probably be a bit more not too bad but there is still creasing taking the Sonia G crease one brush and I'm gonna go into the shade chestnut so I swirled my brush in here and I'm adding a little bit to the outer corner and then dragging some into the crease and I'm not really gonna blend this out right now Next up, I'm taking the Chantecaille Eye Blend Brush and it's just a really thick smudger and I'm gonna go into chocolate. And I'm gonna apply this to the upper lash line in kind of a thick line here. And 
Whatever's left on the brush, I'm just running along the lower lash line. Next up, I'm using my finger in the champagne shade. I'm gonna apply this all over the lid. Actually, it goes on more sheerly than I was expecting. I think it actually goes on a little bit heavier with the brush. So I'm going to go ahead and switch. I wiped off the crease one. I'm just going to use the side of this into the champagne. And now I'm going to kind of blend out the crease with the residue of champagne on the brush. So basically I have champagne all over the lid, but I have a little extra depth along the lash line and the outer corner. I'm gonna take a little dab of the chocolate again and just go over the lower lash or the upper lash line just a touch more, but I am not making it as thick and I'm just doing a light dab because I don't wanna make it as dark as it would be full blast. All right, and then I'm taking the eye blend brush in the champagne and I'm just gonna dab this in the inner corner and along the lower lash line, starting from the inner corner. And that's it. I'm going to finish my makeup and then I will show you a distance shot. And this is my final look from a distance. My thoughts on these shadows are that I, I really like them. So. They surprised me. I'd heard so many things about these luxe eyeshadows and I wanted to try them, but honestly, I didn't really know anything about them. So I wasn't expecting this like hybrid texture when I first started using them. And you may have noticed that in the first eye look, that was my first time using this quad. And I was a little bit surprised at the texture, but it actually applied very smoothly. And you know, the pigmentation's great and the formula lends itself to all of these shades kind of mixing and blending very well. I feel like they hold up fairly well on the lids as well. You can see from the wear test that I did get some creasing around the six hour point, but considering it's more of a creamy texture, I feel like that's pretty decent and I don't feel like the creasing was that bad. Because these do have a creamy texture as well, if you do experience any creasing, you can actually smooth it out with your finger. You don't have to apply more shadow if you don't, you know, if you don't have it with you or you don't want to either. Now for application of these shadows, I personally prefer using a brush. When you use a finger with these, you can kind of really sheer them out, get a really nice light wash of color. Honestly, this chocolate shade here is, if you sheer this out on your lid, you're gonna get a pretty similar color to the chocolate Westman Atelier shade. Let me swatch this. Here's the chocolate from Westman Atelier. And these, you know, they're actually starting to dry a little bit more so than when I first got them. But let's compare the chocolate shades. So you can see the Westman Atelier has a little bit more red in it. And it's also a little bit lighter in color, but you can really get a pretty similar effect between the two of these. So overall, I think that the texture of these shadows is really nice. I really like the creamy property and I personally, I love cream eyeshadows, but they don't always hold up super well. I feel like these being more of that hybrid texture do have a little bit better staying power at, than some of the creams do. And I think they, they've kind of created this blend of the best of powder and the best of cream. And I'm, really happy with this. Now, the individual shades, as I mentioned, retail for $38. They are different shades than what you can get in either of the Christmas palettes. And I'm actually considering picking up the other shade, but honestly, I probably won't because I feel like that one's a little bit, it's too rosy. I've got plenty of pink shadows, especially with the new Chantecaille ones coming. So I'll probably pass on that. But I think these palettes in general, are such a great bargain and I hope they make more of these in the future because I really would like to try more shades of this 
and I would love to be able to get them in a palette versus as singles. One of the things that I found disappointing is really just the color story. And it's really because this is called a bronze palette and I actually wasn't going to get it originally just because it was called bronze. I figured it'd be very bronzy and you know, all of those bronze shades have such a strong reddish undertone that they don't always work well with my skin coloring. So based on the name, I thought it was gonna be a pass. And then I saw swatches online and it really looked more gold, which it is. And I think that works better for me, but I really think having the names and the color shades kind of not match is a disservice. I find that to be a con. I, I wish the shades were a little bit, you know, I just wish it was easier to do shopping online by having shade names that are more appropriate for the actual shade that you are receiving. So again, if you look at these, they just don't look bronze to me, except for maybe this first one, which is called Chestnut. Again, that's the Westman Atelier. So these are the ones in the Bobbi Brown palette. And again, there is another palette. It has four shades. It's called Burgundy, but they all look more like rose gold to me. I think they also appear to have gold shimmer throughout. So I think you will still have kind of that goldish tone to those shadows as well, which is probably why these are all part of the holiday line. So to sum up my long-winded thoughts here, overall, I like the shadows. I think these palettes are an excellent way to try out this formula if it's something you've been interested in. And I am actually very happy with the shades in this palette. My favorite ones are, well, actually I end up using chestnut all the time, but my favorite ones are actually the chocolate. And I always reach for the champagne as you can tell as well, but it really is more of a pale gold. If I had to pick one shade though, the chocolate is my favorite. And I think it's just, it's beautiful. But this palette for me is a win. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and join me on Instagram. I'm at Alexis Jong. And if you have tried any of the Lux Encore shadows, whether it's one of the holiday palettes or some of the singles, please let me know your thoughts. And if you have any experience with the texture of these as time goes on. One of the things I'm most curious about seeing is whether or not they stay this emollient over a longer period of time, especially since there was no listed expiration date. And I have been playing with my Westman Atelier iPods again, and I've noticed that some of the shades have gotten a little bit drier since I opened them back when they were released. So I'm just curious how well they hold up over a long period of time. So if you have any experience, please, please share that down below in the comments. And that's everything for me today. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you soon. Have a great day.